with the same Rotate one. your phone. You can't turn your phone while recording. Okay, so Jacqueline, if you are back on with us or if anyone is back on with us, please let us know if we are upside down or are we sideways because we need to know because we're trying to figure it out. Uh, sorry for so many technical difficulties, but hey, <laughs> that happens when you're going live. So we just need to make sure before we go any further with the introductions and letting you know exactly what we're doing here tonight. So I'm trying to go into soul cooking. So if anyone is with us live, Jacqueline, if you are back with us, please let us know if we are sideways again. Because Tracy and I are trying to pull up our uh, phones and computers. And of course, nothing wants to work when you need it to work. So <laughs> uh, that says just now. Let's see if that is that us now. Go any further yeah. With the That's us now. So we upside down. We we're now we're to the other side. Oh, okay. So Jacqueline says, Jacqueline, are we upside down? Tracy said, yes, we're upside down. We're sideways. So we got to figure it out. We're going to come back in. So give us a minute. To, so what happened now? What we need to do? We'll turn it side. Ah, rotate the other way. I, I forgot we could do that. Okay, we still in. We in. And just a little closer. Yes. <laughs> so... We are back. I think we got it right. So, Jacqueline, if you can, please let us know if you can see us very good. <laughs> because we are trying to figure it out with these phones, trying to turn it around and everything. So, you say we're sideways. Uh, check again, Jacqueline. Refresh and make sure that we are up. Right up. Right up. We just want to make sure before we get started. Thank you, everyone that is that are, that is joining us. Thank you, Sheila, for joining us. Thank you, Donna, for joining us. We just want to make sure she said you're good. Yes, we're good. Okay, so, so we're gonna come in some more. So again, <laughs> let me do some uh, new introductions. I'm t- <laughs> I'm Tawana Carlton, your host of Soul Cooking with Tea, and this is the first episode, if I'm not mistaken, for 2019. We're so glad to be back. Uh, we've had some downtime. We had to get some things together. I had to get me together. Uh, my cameraman went back home to Alabama. So now I was left without a cameraman. Aww. And so now I'm trying to figure it out. I have a young lady that's willing to come in and help me. I appreciate that. And so today is our first uh, official day of coming back into Soul Cooking with Tea. And today it is De-Stress Friday. And so sitting to my right and probably to your left <laughs> is my friend Tracy Deal Montgomery. And so she just told me before we got off the other one that because we had some technical problems, her husband makes sure her name is just Tracy Montgomery. And I understand that. And so she is my guest here in Soul Cooking with Tea. Uh, we are doing De-Stress yes. Friday. De-Stress Friday. Yes. Because listen, ladies. We uh, have to take time for ourselves. We have to take time to de-stress. Uh, some of us work in the home. Some of us work out of the home. Yes. And so we have to take time to rejuvenate, to get back because we've worked so hard during the week. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we just need a break. Sometimes we need to get with our girlfriends if it ain't nothing but watching a movie and cooking. So today we are cooking, yes. yes. We are cooking and so cooking with tea. So before I go any further, I would like to ask my guest and my friend, Tracy, to give you <laughs> just a little bit about herself. Hmm. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, yes. Tawana. I, first of all, I'm excited to be here today. And I look at look at my apron yes. that she's sharing with me today. She just got this brand new from London. Yes, London. And I'm loving it. <laughs> so I think she's going to put me to work. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> For sure, for sure. <laughs> so anyways, um, I, I am just uh, privileged to be here today with uh, Miss Tawana and to sit in on her soul cooking yes. um, uh, channel tonight. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, we're going to have some good food this yes. evening, what she shared with me, what we're going to be doing. Um, just a little bit about me. Let's see here. Um been married 20 wow 26 years wow and so that's like wow yeah wow <laughs> you talk about girl time needed yes we all need girl time <laughs> share time yes you know distress yes. work it through and to be able to love those men okay <laughs> um and so i have uh four awesome children um and i'm just blessed to have them in my life yes. and you know i call them mini adults 
Mm-hmm. They're, you know, they're adult age, but <laughs> they haven't. Anyway, so my mini adults, I love them and um, have five grandchildren. Oh, my goodness. I keep telling these people I'm too young for this. I don't know. But they keep popping them. As long as they're taking care of them, I guess it's all good, right? Yes, 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 so, yes, yes. That's some more girl time discussion time. Yes. Grand, grandkids. Kids. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I'm not there yet. <laughs> John, not there yet. Yeah. So, um, but uh, let's see. What else about me? I, um, my husband and I, we actually, we have a catering business. It's called yeah. Montgomery's House. And our theme for Montgomery's house is getting the family back to the table. Oh. And so um, my husband loves to see people enjoy food, as I know Miss Tawana yes. does too. Yes, yes. And so um, just bringing the family back to the table dough with a, dough, with a good meal <laughs> and um, having fun and discussions yes. and leaving the cell phones out Yes, um, of the whole mix, you know? Yes. So, um, but yes, we do that together. Um, I also do work full time and um, I just recently here started more with my um, wedding coordinating business. Okay. So event coordinating and doing stuff like that. So as I'm well. learning something new guys. I did not know yeah. she did wedding co- coordination. I did not. So I'm learning something uh, also tonight. <laughs> I've been doing it for a while. Okay. But I never, um, you know, they say putting value on yourself. Yes. Never yes. thought about, you know, what I would charge someone or right. what I would do. And so, um, you know, as an entrepreneur uh-huh. and you start being around other entrepreneurs and really getting that, like, you're valuable. Right. And so I had to come to that place <laughs> and go, you're giving up all this for free. free. And yeah. Yeah. So there's definitely, when you have a passion, it, it feels kind of weird sometimes, like charging someone, but when you understand what's behind it because right. people are really getting something of value as well yes. and these are how we make our living right, right. that's right so um yes that is something Yay. i just recently got more into as far as charging Charge. um, <laughs> <laughs> praise the lord right. um also i am an independent uh, beauty consultant with mary Kay. so love to um teach women how to take care of their skin yes and knowing that Makeup is not the thing that cures all. <laughs> Got to take care of your skin. Damn, Clean yes, it. Yes. Wash it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> take care of it. Pamper it. So um, that, that's my other side hustle. You know, she's a boss lady. Yes. You got to yeah. have, have your side hustles. <laughs> you got your main job. We as yes. women, we have our main job. But we do have to have our side mm-hmm. hustle. Because we got to have them coins. <laughs> yes, we need our coins. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And again, that's another thing that I love to do is uh, making women feel just important yes. and just beautiful again. And tonight we're talking about de-stressing. Yes. And so that's a part of that. Yes, it is. Is being able to, you know, go and do your own facial if you need to. Yes. But knowing that when you're doing that, you can sit back, relax, put some music on. Yes. And know that you're t- doing some self-care. Care. Self-care. And so that being important as yes. well. Um, so Tracy and I met through a, mu- a mutual friend and she was having a Mary Kay party. Yes. And so that's how our friendship started a couple of years ago. And I would always tell Tracy every time she would always invite me to events, uh, I would go and some I didn't get a chance to go to, but I would always tell her before we would depart from each other. It's a reason why. Uh, our paths have crossed yes. and I'm so thankful that God has allowed our paths to cross. I'm not going to tell you our business because that's between <laughs> sisters and I'm not going to tell you all the goods. But listen, uh, it is nice to have, to be able to meet other women uh, and to meet women, not judging them, yes. but to just meet them for right where they are. Uh, and getting to know them for yourself. Even yes. though I was introduced to another mutual friend, it was because I went to Thank America. Thank you, Patricia. <laughs> yes. Patricia Parker. Yes. And so I went to America. It was America. She yes. had an uh, event at her. Uh, our friend Patricia had an event at her house. And so that's how me and Tracy met. And we've been friends. And now we, we are talking on the phone. <laughs> we are just hanging out. And so I asked her, I was like, you know what? I want to do a de-stress Friday. Yeah. Like, let's get together. And she was like, okay, so what we going to do? I was like, I don't know. We're going to figure it out. And so uh, maybe some of you saw the question uh, earlier. 
uh, that I posted during the week talking about our De-Stress Friday. Thank you all for those that are joining us. Let me go through yes. uh, and thank you. So thank you, Jacqueline Turnbow, for joining us. Thank you, Donna uh, Burnett, for joining us. Thank you, Mary Dyer, for joining us. Thank you, Regina, that is my mentor uh, here in the group. Uh, I hope that I am doing you some justice <laughs> because I remember the things you tell me not to say. <laughs> and so I have to keep remembering not to do those things. So thank you so much, Regina. So so during the week, we, I posted about things that we talk about as girlfriends and things mm-hmm. that we don't talk about. But before we get into the discussion, Tracy has brought us something to drink. I can't wait. <laughs> so while she's getting that together, let me tell you what we're going to have for, for our dinner, for our de-stress uh, Friday. So we're going to have uh, waffles. I'm going to make homemade waffles. We're going to have fried chicken. We're going to have fruit. I made uh, honey butter. Uh, and when Tracy starts with the drinks, you'll see I made orange juice with uh, strawberries, blackberries, and a few blueberries. So I'm excited. Uh, we won't show you all the cooking, but we will take pictures so that you can see it. Because we really wanted to come on tonight. Really, it's about... Uh, sharing, coming on, talking about de-stressing, yes. uh, and taking time for ourselves. And that's that's very important as women because we always mm-hmm. put ourselves last. At the end of the day, we're so tired. Uh, we're so stressed because we didn't take time to say no. Yes. No is a complete sentence. Let me make yeah. sure we understand <laughs> that. No is a complete <laughs> sentence. Sometimes we have to say no. Mm-hmm. Our family sometimes won't understand that, but that's okay. They'll get used to you saying no because you yes. have to start at some point in your life taking care of you. So when do we take care of ourselves? Because at the end of the week, we're tired, we're beat down, but we'll still get up when the family wants something to eat, if the clothes need to be washed, if the house needs to be clean. Mm-hmm. We're getting up doing those things, but yeah. it comes a time in your life you have to say no, no, no. Mm-hmm. That I'm tired. No, that I'm not picking up your clothes. No, <laughs> yes. I'm not washing the dishes. Because somebody else can do those things. So, ladies, make sure you take time uh, to de-stress. Take time for yourself. So, Trace is about to make us something to drink. Okay, so first of all, um, I am not um, an alcoholic or not an alcoholic. <laughs> an alcohol like drinker or wine or any of those things right right? and so I have a girlfriend who knows this about me (laughs) and she's found this fun drink and it's a sangria but it's a virgin it's from (laughs) like cider right yeah it's from Welch's so it's a sparkling sangria it's a flavored juice cocktail I was like I'm gonna bring this tonight and surprise my sis with it yes so what's awesome is you know God worked this out okay because her making these I are ice cubes <laughs> with the fruit. Yes. And it's out of orange juice. Yes. What goes with sangria? It's orange, orange juice. juice. Okay. <laughs> and even on the bottle there, if you could see, there's orange juice. Isn't that so cute? Okay. So I was so excited when I got here and she showed me about her um, her ice cubes. I was like, yes. So I'm going to push This is about. so neat. Okay. And you won't believe oh where gosh. I bought it from. Where'd you get the Dollar Tree? 99 cent store. <laughs> I'm telling you, I am a bargain shopper. I believe in having nice things. Don't let the rest of them drop off. I know, I know. <laughs> so I'm used to, I like to bargain shop. I like nice things. But listen, when your coins are kind of short, ladies, we know how to improvise. And so I was in the 99 cent store probably last year and I saw these uh, ice trays and I was like, you know what? I'm going to purchase these. <laughs> so I bought quite a few of them and then I was looking in another store uh, and the trays are like, I mean, I think about 4 or $5, and I got it for $0.99. Wow. Cent. So make sure you are always checking your $0.99 cent store because they do have great, amazing bargains. Uh, and so this was one of the bargains, and I'll bring the glass up so that you can see. See? The cubes. And it's just very simple. Whatever you're going to make to drink or whatever, you you know, you're having a party. Uh, if you're making it with ice cream, you know, you can let the ice cream get a little soft. And put in fruits and all kind of things, and it just makes it just more beautiful. It just decorates it. Very simple, very inexpensive. I cannot wait. So another thing that I realized in the evening, sometimes I would take a wine glass mm-hmm. and I would put water in it, some ice, <laughs> some lime, and just drink it from the wine glass. Yes, yes. 
Yes. Just de-stressed me. Yes. I don't know what it is about the wine glass. <laughs> Just that wine glass. <laughs> Just the glass. So, here we are with our sangria, um, virgin sangria. Yes. Um, <laughs> she wants to make sure. Orange juice. Just in case <laughs> someone's <laughs> watching that they understand that it is virgin. <laughs> with our orange juice cubes with yes. our Yes. And so, just this looks look so pretty. Look at that. That is so pretty. Yes. And it's very uh, summery. Yes. Because here on the West Coast, I have to remember I'm on the West Coast now. Yes. It has been crazy weather. Like, it has been raining for three days. It has been so cold. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought I was in New York because <laughs> it was cold. Like, you needed to turn on the heat. And I was walking around with my house coat on and my blanket because it was so cold. Yeah. The weather has been <laughs> like New York. Like, it's wintertime. So, cheers. Cheers to you. Yes. All right. Hopefully, uh, ladies, that you have your drink, whatever your drink is, your mm -hmm. flavor. And here's to you. So, oh, God, I can't wait. That tastes really good. Mm-hmm. No, not that I even know what sangria tastes like, but that's a good. It tastes uh, just like that. That's a, it, it tastes just that's like a good that. drink. <laughs> it tastes just like that. It minus the uh, you have alcohol in it, but it tastes just uh -huh. like that. You can't yeah. really tell uh, right. if it had alcohol or not because it tastes just like that. Oh, just like. Oh, that. I need you to know she found these at. Uh, I think she told me a nine nine cent store. I bought some, and um, they also if you have um the grocery outlet. They have them too. They'll, you know, they come in with special ones as well, and they're like a dollar something there as well too. Ooh, not an assist though. I can yes. tell you, it's a bargain place. <laughs> I go in there a lot when my coins are right, <laughs> and I just like to surf the different shelves to find things that I want. Mm -hmm. And so, ladies, uh, like I said, tonight is about you all, and it's about De Stress Friday. So, as Tracy and I was talking during the week, uh, we were talking. She, I was in Tarjay's in the dressing room. And we started talking about uh, some ideas of what we're going to do for the show. Mm -hmm. And so one thing we both uh, said to each other, uh, one of the questions and things that our parents, uh, our mothers especially, didn't talk to us about, it was about sex. So yeah. listen, if you have the children in the room, <laughs> go ahead and escort them out because we're about to go in. Oh, and so um, we both said that our mothers, only thing our mothers told us uh, was not to have sex. Yeah. So how many of you in here tonight that their mother said to you, do not have sex? If you are in this room, raise your hand, put a hand up, give us some hearts, give us some, some type of emoji. Because listen, um, I can remember my mother, that was the thing she said, do not have sex. Yeah. But what she did not say, it was why not to have why sex. Why not? Exactly. It was the why not. You As, know when we tell we can't do something, what we do? We do it. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Because <laughs> that's what, you know, some of us did. Because our parents said, do not. That's why I said we are having real conversation tonight, yes. ladies. Because now that I had a child, and the first thing I started to talk to him about was, listen, I don't want you to have sex before marriage. I don't want you to be out here just willy-nilly having sex with girls. But what I did was I took it a little bit further because I was a little bit more educated. And I yes. said, listen, these are the reasons why I don't want you to have sex. Because, yes, you're going to have the urge to do it. Because that's natural. Mm -hmm. But but I wanted him to know it was too many sexual transmitted diseases out here. Right. Not only would AIDS take you out, but it's some diseases other than AIDS yes. that would take you out of this world. So I wanted him to know that. I wanted to make sure that the door was open. That if he wanted to talk about it, mm -hmm. that he could. Now, my, I was raised by my grandparents, but my grandmother made sure she said that to me. Do not have sex. But I'm saying to myself, well, why not? Right. Right. Even though I grew up in the church, yeah, uh, was involved in church, but that was never a subject that was talked about in church. That was not a subject that nope. was talked about in school. So mm -hmm. how, how was it with you when your mother said, do not have sex? Yeah, that that's pretty much the extent of it. <laughs> and the the household my mom came from, when I look back, history has mm -hmm. a lot to do with that, mm -hmm. you know. And so her mom didn't talk to her about it either, mm -hmm. about sex and about not, you know, mm -hmm. just don't do it, right, type of thing. And so when it came to my mom, she was very naive in these areas, right, as a as a young woman, right. And so. I, maybe it was uncomfortable for her. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, at that stage, it was like, don't have sex. 
Right. And so, unfortunately, that wasn't enough, I guess, for me Mm -hmm. (laughs) at that age where we're having this conversation. And what did you say? You're going to get the urges. Right. And us as girls, we tend to give in to these guys at a younger age. Right. You know, I know that I, for myself, like Mm self-esteem was very low. Mm -hmm. Didn't think very much of me being a pretty girl. Right. Or, you know, just being a thick girl, you know, growing up. And so those things. Right. You know, when you have a nickname, Fat Mama, that Mm kind of hangs on, right? Right. (laughs) And um, so what it does to our self-esteem in that way. Right. So, um, yes, I was unfortunately active young. Right impressionable of course um and so that happened and when it did and when my mom found out and it was kind of like she's talking to my auntie and my auntie goes you think she gonna just stop you know because you said stop you better put that girl in some birth control you know and i'm hearing this conversation i'm like wow but um my mom was still in a denial state of however that was, you just can't tell her don't. Right. And my auntie, she was, I'm going to say she was from the street. <laughs> so she was just like, girl, she ain't stopping. Did mm. you stop once you got it? Mm. You know? <laughs> so she's like, you're going to tell. Oh, just don't do, do it. it. No. Yeah. You better protect her. Right. Because she's active now. Right. Type of thing. And so, um, but yeah. So when it came to our kids, my husband was the one who was Had on the conversation. It. Oh, wow. We started at like five. Okay. With my daughter, as far as just her awareness. Okay. When you know they're talking, they're seeing things on TV. Yes. You know, and so the, I think the word sex came across TV or something. Oh. And so my husband's like, So what does that mean? My daughter's five. Okay. <laughs> and so start early. Start teaching them. Because right. we just don't know how much, how, how can I say this? Um, these children are so much more, especially even now, yes. advanced yes. than yes. what we think they are right. and the things they see and hear and that they're exposed to. to. Right. And so, yeah, it started pretty early. And so with that, and then, you know, and then the more kids can't, he just, that cycle. So I don't know if I just got blessed in that respect that <laughs> I didn't have to go as much with it, but yes. my husband definitely was going to make sure that our kids knew about it right. and were um, prepared if that came into their life. Yes. And how to handle it. And you have to, like, I see some of the comments, you you have to start early because uh, they have, every child now at so early of age has yeah. a phone, has a tablet, has a computer, yes. has access to the internet. And so there'll be things that come, you know, across, okay, okay. come across and and you have to have them prepared. You yeah. have to have that conversation. Yes. Because if you don't, guess what? Some of their friends will have it in the playground. Some of their friends would have it in the next room and you don't know about it. So you have to have those conversations. You have to talk about it. Because it's just so much. They have so much at their hand mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Because they can just click and it's on. Okay. And sometimes we're not in the room. We don't have, you know, that parental control. So you have to make sure on their phones, their tablets, those type of things, you have to make sure that they uh, are protected. Uh, And just having that conversation, and like you were saying with your business, uh, bringing families back to the table. That's what I'm about with soul cooking, bringing the families back to the table. And that's important because that's what we believe in soul cooking too. Because we turn our phones off. We turn our tablets off and we start to have those conversations because it is necessary to have those conversations. And at the table is where you will find out a lot of things about what's going yeah, on. What's in going on. Yes, yes. In their lives because yeah. they're eating and they're not paying attention to sometimes of what they're saying and mm-hmm. it just rolls out their mouth. Mm-hmm. And so that is so important. I know one of the young ladies I uh, asked to... Uh, Give us some feedback. And if you have questions or something you want to talk about, yes, make sure you put do. it in the feed. We're here. We're going to talk about it. We're not trying to debate anything. We're just talking about our opinion and how, you know, things that we've been through, uh, what we've talked about with our girlfriends, things that we haven't talked about with our girlfriends. <laughs> and so just being able to have a, 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 being able to come in and soul cooking and talk about those things. So one young lady that I reached out to, she said that 
when her and her girlfriends get together, they talk about religion, they talk about boys, uh, they do have the sex conversation, they do have the conversation of how to date, mm -hmm. when to date, mm -hmm. uh, when you have kids, when you don't have kids, what to do, how to do it. And so, if you have questions or you want to, uh, and if you don't want to post it right in the feed, just inbox me because I have my uh, notebook here. And we can see and we can go right yeah. into it and yeah. it's private and won't call your name, won't say your name. But it's just that we have to have those conversations with our girlfriends. Just things that we don't talk about. Uh, sometimes it's about marriage. It's about life. It's sometimes about your job. It's sometimes it's about things like we were talking about with the sex. Not, our parents saying not to have sex. Like... Mm -hmm. Mom, we need to know why. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, you have to have those conversations, like with about religion. A lot of times, people don't like to talk about religion. Sometimes people don't like to talk about uh, their jobs and what's going on, and uh, because I think pol and politics is another one. Like people oh, get yeah. real uptight about <laughs> politics. Like you either Democrat or you Republican or you uh, uh what's the other one? Um, Liberal. Yes. So either one, we all have our opinions on what we believe in, what we you know know, and what we've grown up to be. Like I grew up being a Democrat. Yes, I'm a Democrat. I say I am a Democrat. <laughs> I'm not shying away. People, you know, they want don't want to talk about it, but mm -hmm. I'll talk about it because. But I'm not going to debate you because yeah, you have your opinion. I have my opinion, mm -hmm. and we can agree and disagree. That's right. And it's okay uh, because yeah. sometimes there are things that the Democrats do that I don't like, and there's some things that the Republicans don't do that I don't like and sometimes it's vice versa sometimes I like what the Republicans may be saying and, and not liking what the Democrats but it's okay mm -hmm. uh, to be able to have a, a sensible conversation and That's not right. be arguing back and forth because <laughs> yes. your religion, your political views are your views and so we just have to uh, come to a point where we say you know what we agree to disagree uh, so if you have any comments, please put them in the co in the comments below, or you can just inbox me, and I'll make sure that we talk about it. So another thing, I think uh, Tracy and I was talking about is when do you get a cookies up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> when do you get as a woman, mm -hmm. uh, a single woman uh, that's dating? Uh, I know Steve Harvey talks about the ninety day. Yeah. Rule. Yeah. So, what do you think about the ninety-day rule? When do we do it? When should we do it? When shouldn't? Like I said, this is the time you have those conversation things that you don't want to talk about at the table, or you want to talk about with your girlfriends. But listen, it's okay to ask. Maybe you have one girlfriend that you truly trust that you can mm -hmm. just come and just spill everything that you want and not have to worry about her repeating what you say. So listen, I advise you and I <laughs> encourage you, uh, not advise you, encourage you to get that one girlfriend yeah. or maybe it's two girlfriends that you yeah. can trust with your innermost secrets and that they trust you and have that conversation because sometimes you just need to get that stress off of you to talk about it yeah. and move on because it is hard out here just doing it by yourself, not talking to nobody, being closed off. And as women, yes, women, some women, some, let me say that, some women can be catty. Some women can be messy. Mm -hmm. But if you find that one or that two, listen, take close to them so that you can both encourage each other, hold each other accountable. Because you need someone that you can depend on yes. when times are good, when times are bad. Mm -hmm. And so making sure that you have someone that you can... Pick up the phone in the middle of the night if it's 3 o'clock in the morning and say, listen, I just need to talk. I just need to vent. I don't need you to say anything. I just need to vent. Mm -hmm. And so I see uh, Mary, Mary said, I didn't wait 90 days. Okay, Mary, I know that's right. Absolutely. <laughs> the 90 days. I don't know where Steve came up with the 90 days because I, I didn't wait 90 days either. Uh, to be honest, you know, just be truthful. Yeah. Like, where did the 90 day rule come from? I just need to know about it. I've read the book and I know that's from a man's opinion. Oh, okay. And I understand the things that he's saying. I'm not, you know, discrediting anything that he said. Uh, but as women, what do we say that we should do? What do you think? I was looking at Jacqueline's um, 
her input and she was saying that it's designed for marriage and you're right. Mm-hmm. And and so being that it is designed for marriage, but there are many, many women, young ladies who don't understand that mm-hmm. and don't get that until mm-hmm. after the right. fact. Right. And then it's kind of backing up into it. And um, I, I just even thinking about myself, like I said, early age, um, God was not a part of our household right. in the sense where it was discussed about that. You know, um, I knew my mom knew God. Um, I, we went to church now and again. So, uh, but it wasn't something that was talked about, you know, right. when it came to that. And so not until I became a, a young adult myself and once my life was changed because I gave myself to the Lord, right? you know, making that dedication, that day was a 180 degree turnaround for me. Mm-hmm. And it was, it's so funny to say this. It was just like feeling like a virgin again. Mm. The experience that I had with God on that day right. was like that. And not everybody experiences that. Right. But there are some that then understand right. and they come to that understanding this is meant for marriage. And then they understand the soul ties right. that have happened along the way. Right. You know, um, but for that woman who, and that young lady who just doesn't have that foundation and right. understand, what does that mean? To sit? It's for marriage. Right. You know, and when you, we're so in love and we believe yes. he's the one. Yes. And we're engaged. Yes. Even, yes. Okay. Yes. And we haven't done anything, but Haunty. Right. It's getting closer and it's been a while. Right. And we both have experienced it. We both have. Right. You know? Right. And so we're like, but we're getting married. Right. So we should just go ahead. Right. And we should do this. Mm-hmm. And we shouldn't feel pressured. The pressure. Right. We should not feel <laughs> pressured. And, and, and then another thing, too, I was just in my mind came up is don't allow, don't let you, don't beat yourself up because yes. you did it. Yeah. Because you did it. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I've learned as I am reading my Bible more is that when you know better, mm-hmm. you will do better. Yeah. And so I had to, it was things in life yeah. that I've had to learn because once you, I started to read that Bible, it was that I learned that now by reading the word, mm-hmm. you know the things that you're not supposed to be doing. But wait, the because now is, I'm accountable. Now it becomes a part of you, though, too. Right. So it doesn't become a struggle. Right. Right. When it becomes a part of who you are. Right. There is no struggle. Right. Some of us think, oh, I can't, and I can't, and I can't. Right. But when it becomes a part of who you are, mm-hmm. it's no longer about I can't. Right. It's not. I don't want to do that. I have not a desire, desire to, to do, do that. that anymore. So don't let your don't beat yourself up. Is yes. what I'm saying yeah. because that you you had sex. Before marriage, mm-hmm. don't let someone else beat you down because you had sex before marriage. Listen, we all have done dumb stuff. We've all done things that we shouldn't have done. Mm-hmm. But once we learn and we've lived, you know, you have to, it's things in life you will experience in life. And once you learn, well, you know what? I should have did that. But I'm not going to beat myself up because I did it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, okay, I learned. I know not to do that again. Yeah. And I have to move on. Because sometimes we can get in as women. We hold a lot of things and we beat ourselves up. We beat ourselves up because we've uh, done things that we shouldn't have. And we thought about it afterwards. Yeah. And so we just yeah. have to um, not allow that part of the flesh to just keep beating us down Mm -hmm. uh, and just move on. But like I said, it is, uh, like I said, once you start to read that Bible, uh, not trying to push any religion on anybody, you, you, whatever your religion is, you know, your beliefs, you know what Mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for me just getting in the word, just realizing, okay, so I wasn't supposed to be doing these things, (laughs) but now that I know that I know better, you know, it's you're more conscious of it. Yeah. I'm more conscious of a lot of things. Uh, but as women, uh, like I said, we carry a lot. And so we're trying to carry the family. We're trying to carry ourselves. And then we start to be, I know for me, and as I was telling Tracy a couple of times, I was beating myself up because I was mad. I was angry. I was, wasn't getting to the place where I wanted to be. But that was because I didn't know me. 
because we're so busy trying to take care of everybody else. Yeah. So we lose us in mm-hmm. the process. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes we, not sometimes, <laughs> like Friday is that. my time to de-stress. Friday is my time. Like mm-hmm. everything that's went on for the whole from Sunday to Friday. <laughs> listen, Friday is my time. I de-stress. I don't care if the dishes ain't washed. I don't care if I didn't watch the clip. Friday night is my time to de-stress. And that's what we have to do. We have to take time each and every day to de-stress. Again, let me scroll, go through, scroll through. I know my mentor is going to get me about saying that. <laughs> uh, thank you all for joining us live. Thank you again, Jacqueline uh, Turnbow, for joining us. Thank you, Donna Burnett, for joining us. Thank you, Regina Robinson, for joining My sister is on. Hello, Miss Maria. Gina. And Miss Gina Marie Sandler. Yes. Thank you so much for joining Hi, us. Thank you so much, Mary Dyer, for joining us. Thank you for your comments. Hey Susie. Uh, uh, hello, Susie. Is it Marbury? <laughs> yes. Marbury, thank mm-hmm. you for joining us. Um, so yes, we thank you for coming in tonight. Like I said, we just wanted to do some de stress. Yeah. Uh just talking to have some girl talk because you need to find a girlfriend or girlfriends that mm-hmm. you can just hang out with, just pick a day, whether it's coming to your house to hang out, whether it's going to the mall just to walk around and go shopping. Go have a mani pity. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you gotta just take time for yourself, and that's what is de stress Friday. We just I decided to be the first show. <laughs> Come on with my girlfriend, and we have de stress Friday. Yes, we're going to cook after the show uh, because that gives us a time to cook and talk, and we're gonna de stress. We may find mm-hmm. a movie. Who knows what we may do? We may end up at Target's, Walmart. <laughs> Uh, Starbucks. Shopping yes. is de-stressful for me. Okay? And I don't have to buy nothing. I just walk shopping. Yes. Just walk. Look, I'm, I'm happy with that. Yes. Um, I love just walking. I don't care if I don't buy anything. Yeah. Not one little thing. I'm happy. Just let me walk in the stores and I am content. Yes. Sometimes I can just walk in the mall for hours until <laughs> my feet start hurting. Don't have one bag, but that bag from um, we got some agreements in here. Yes, what's the, what's the de- uh, store? It's the pretzel store. Uh, Annie's. Oh yes, yes, you got you like that pretzel. Ooh. Okay, so you know we're going to the mall together one day because I love. Uh, oh, just give me a pretzel. Mm-hmm. I like the almond. Is it almond buttering? Uh, almond and butter, something. You know, all I need is a plain pretzel with okay. some butter on it. So you know she's from from the New York area. Okay. Oh yes. yes. <laughs> and so you see, she and said the plain salt on there. That's all I need. Some mustard. Oh girl, don't I don't start. need the mustard. Even when I'm in New York, I don't want nothing but the pretzel. I, I can have it and the cheese. But the mustard. No, it's like really good. I want yeah. cheese. Well, you know, cheese all right. Yes. And we talk about. <laughs> These are pretzels <laughs> off of the street. Yes. It's nothing in New York like a pretzel on the street. Woo. So, uh, we definitely have to go to New York. Maybe that would be a good girlfriend soul cooking trip for some yeah. women we get together. Yes. Uh, some women yes. from across the country, across the world. Uh, hello, that's my my dear friend Zanetta is on. Um, so talk about friends. Let me let me say this. I have quite a few girlfriends on here. New girlfriends, girlfriends, and uh, uh, friends I went to school with. Uh, but Zanetta and I, Zanetta, Mary, and Donna, all of us grew up uh, in Troy, Alabama. But Zanetta and I, I lived on the side street. She lived on the front street. And I think we started uh, what now they call it pre-K. But we started pre whatever it was kindergarten uh, <laughs> together. And we've been friends. Her birthday just passed uh, in January. And I would say, girl, we've been friends for about 50. She's like, no, it's more than 50 years. So I can truly say I have mm. a girlfriend. Wow. That we have been friends for 50 plus years. Lifetime. Yes. And when New Year's comes, uh, I call her uh, before her New Year's in Alabama. Mm-hmm. And we sometimes may talk up until my time. And sometimes, yeah, yeah. right. And then <laughs> if we don't. She'll call me back when it's New Year's here and uh-huh. we talk. And if we miss each other, we make sure first thing that next morning we are on the phone trying to talk to each other. Sometimes we talk uh, sometimes a couple times during the week. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes we be on the phone two, three hours. 
And I'm talking about we can talk three hours today. We'll skip a couple of days and we'll be back on the phone uh-huh. two, three hours again. So yeah. you have to have that girlfriend that you could just get on the phone and we talk about anything. Like we be talking about random stuff. <laughs> Just pure <laughs> random. But we can get on there, and I know that we can pick up the phone anytime. Uh, me and Mary, the same way I, uh, me and Mary, Mary lived not too far from me, Mary Dyer. And so Mary and I became much closer um, after high school. And so we have started talking. We always kept up our friendship. Mary is someone that I can call. Mary knows, and she calls me. Mm-hmm. Uh, she lives in Georgia. Donna is in Georgia, too. Uh, Donna is the paparazzi lady. Listen, make sure you check her out. It's about also about supporting each other. Yes. Uh, making yes. sure you check her out. Donna, make sure you put your um, link in. Jacqueline Turnbull is another my sister. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jacqueline, I met under Regina Robinson. Uh, Regina is our mentor. And Jacqueline and I have started an amazing friendship. Jacqueline is in Ohio. Uh, and Jacqueline, as I started soul cooking with tea, mm-hmm. Jacqueline always would pick up the phone, give me amazing ideas. I thank her for that. She she'll call mm-hmm. me and just uh, pour into me. She gives me ideas. She gives me things to think about. Um, and one night we were trying to get a uh, Jacqueline. I have to tell you, still not heard from Google. So I'm gonna put that out there. Google, I have not heard from you about my free website. I'm still Uh-oh. waiting on my letter. Google, uh, let's put that out there. Uh, one thing I want to share is that Jacqueline, uh, she will push you and she will actually, okay, did you do this? Did you do that? Mm. So one particular night, uh, we were talking about doing some things with Google and she just, Call me and say, okay, we're going to do this. And I'm like, okay, Jacqueline, I'll call you back. Jack was like, no, <laughs> we're going to do this right now. So, Jacqueline, I thank you for being my sister friend. I thank you for being my friend. Like I said, my mentor is on here, uh, Regina Robinson. Uh, Jacqueline, make sure you put in your uh, links to your page. Uh, Jacqueline uh, Turnbow, please uh, include your. She has a Happy Fit Friday. She encourages us to get out on Fridays. Uh, she walks and does her live. And so Jacqueline has encouraged me plenty of days when I did not want to walk. Mm-hmm. Days that I didn't want to just, I just wanted to lay in bed. Mm-hmm. But when she comes on, Happy Fit Friday, uh, like one particular Friday, I got out. She was walking. I made sure I got up and got my wee out. And I just like, you know what? I'm going to do some sports. I'm going <laughs> to have a go. good time. And so Jacqueline, make sure you put your information in. Thank you so much, Donna, so that, that the ladies can reach out to you. Uh, Regina, if you are still on, make sure you put your links in. Uh, Ladies, if you're looking for a mentor, if you're looking to write your first novel, whatever it is, whether it's a novel, whether it's um, a cookbook, whatever you're wanting to do to start to write, make Mm. sure you reach out to Regina Robinson. She's an amazing mentor. She will push you out the box when you don't even want to be pushed out. This past week, right. uh, weekend, I spoke to uh, a group of women in yes. Oxnard, and it was because of God first and Regina, because she helped. She has a um, mentoring program, uh, Ignite Your Voice. And listen, if you are ready mm. to ignite your voice, listen, mm. she is the one. Not because she's my mentor, but listen. She w- will push you to the limit. She will push you where you don't even you couldn't even see being pushed. Come on. Uh, and so make sure you reach out to her if she's I not like still on. Yes, listen. <laughs> yes. She listen. I got on that stage and I was just making sure I was remembering because Regina tells me every time, and I'm gonna share it with you all. Don't get on there with that. Uh, uh, oh. Uh. Because <laughs> when I first started with Soul Cooking with Tea, I had it bad. Like I had it real, real bad. Um, and so she kept reminding me about mm-hmm. that, reminding mm-hmm. me and reminding me, uh, not in a way that it was, she's picking on me. No, it was, it to was a better. way, right. It was to yeah. make me better, but to have me for. remind me of the things that I was doing to make me better. Yeah. And so when I got on that stage to speak to those women, I made sure I could just hear her voice and remember what I said. And so I did remember mm-hmm. and I was able to get up there and to speak. So like, if you're looking for an amazing mentor, that will push you outside the box. That will help you write your first book. Uh, that will help you get your voice. Ignite your voice. Academy. I believe that's what it is. Uh, to be able to formulate your speech. And to be able to 
be able to speak to the masses, whatever your message is. Make sure you reach out to Regina Robinson. And again, I thank you all for joining us tonight. Listen, I don't know about Tracy, but my stomach does start to <laughs> talk. I did want to mention something. You said Donna is in paparazzi, right? Yes. Paparazzi is off the chain. <laughs> I love paparazzi. But I do want to tell you, Mary Kay done got hooked to the paparazzi. Mm-hmm. If you did not hear already, they just came out with a paparazzi pink lipstick. What? Fire. What? It's fire. I was like, oh my gosh. I said, the paparazzi ladies will love this. Yes, right? yes. So, you know, working together. <laughs> Donna, <laughs> but, make sure you reach out to Tracy. And Tracy's no. going to reach out to you. But definitely, um, I, I love the jewelry. Yes. It's fun. I like to change up yes. on my jewelry. So, paparazzi is like the best thing happening. And she had an amazing show today. If you, ladies, yeah. if you didn't get a chance to see Donna's show today, Make sure uh, you go back and check out Donna. Make sure you put your link in. I think you did earlier. But make sure you go and check out Donna uh, Paparazzi. It was amazing today. I think one of the pieces is a silver piece and it has the three different links. Mm -hmm. All it was amazing. She had some nice stuff on there today. So make sure you check it out, ladies. Everyone, uh, we want to thank you all for joining those new friends that are here for the first time to Soul Cooking with Tea. Thank you so much for joining. Listen, I ask that you share this out uh, to your girlfriends, even if you have to do it in a private message, because yes, we did talk about some things that children under a certain age should not be hearing. But we just want to encourage ladies, listen, it is De-Stress Friday. Whatever your day you pick for De-Stress, pick that day, hang out with your girlfriends. Listen, if you don't have any girlfriends, hang out with yourself. Because listen, you gotta You're the get the best one yes. to hang out with. <laughs> Once you get to know you, yeah, you'll get to know what you like, what you dislike, what you're not gonna put up with, mm-hmm. what you will put up with, and so it's good to know you. Uh, I've learned that. I've had to learn me. Mm-hmm. Uh, just being by yourself, like Tracy was saying, turn on the music. Sometimes I turn that TV off. I turn that music on. Yeah. I have my bubbles. I have my candles. And listen, that music be playing and I can just completely relax in my bubble bath. Mm -hmm. No noise, no no, nothing going on except that music. And my mind is not racing about the next thing I have to do. Because that's what we're doing every day. Our mind is racing. I got to get here. I got to do this. But if you just take time, just a little time, Mm -hmm. and turn that water on. And if you don't like to take a bath, take a shower. And just turn your candles on, turn your music on. And listen, you will start to see a new you. It won't happen overnight because it didn't happen overnight for me. I don't know about Tracy, but it did not happen overnight to start to just start to unwind and to de-stress and let everything that went on for the whole week. Because listen, those clothes you have in the laundry basket, they can wait. (laughs) The dishes, put some soap on them, run a little water across them. (laughs) It can wait. Or put them in your dish uh, dishwasher. Dishwasher, yeah. Uh, And just listen... The shoes that are in the middle of the floor, guess what? They're going to be there again tomorrow. Those socks that's laying on the side of the sofa mm-hmm, at my house right now. Mm-mm. They will be okay <laughs> until tomorrow. Because you just have to take just a little time for yourself. I thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, this won't be the last time you'll see Tracy and Soul Cooking with Tea. Because, listen, she says she has a catering business. Yeah. And it's called... Montgomery's House. Montgomery's House. Yes. Listen, we're going to have Montgomery's House in the house. Uh Uh-oh. Soul cooking with tea. (laughs) I'm not going to be the only one cooking. (laughs) Uh, We will uh, take pictures. We'll show you our beautiful table. Yeah. Uh, I had to make sure that it was set up so we could have an amazing time. Uh, We will take pictures. I will post them in Soul Cooking with Tea. Again, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Let's go back and we'll try to read some of the comments before we leave. Let's see, can I scroll? Okay, I can scroll. Um, Because earlier we were having technical problems. So uh, we were upside down, we were sideways, but we came back and we finally uh, got it together. Um, Gina says, ladies, this is awesome. Thank you, Miss Gina. Yes, uh, Mary, I think Mary was saying, I did, I think we were talking about sex and having it, you know, we had that talk with our parents, just said don't have sex, and we didn't know why not to have sex, Uh, and Donna said, yes, you have to start early. Yes, ma'am. I was going to just even say in there also, when it came to that question about how long do you wait, and you know what, Um, 
I'm a, I'm a say this as a woman of God, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you only you and God can have that conversation mm-hmm. at, when it comes down to it. Mm-hmm. I know what the word says. Yes. Our marriage, it's, it, it's meant for that, mm-hmm. for that relationship. Mm-hmm. And, but if you don't have that relationship, you got to find the self-worth within right. and to know that you are so worthy, um, that you don't have to, we don't have to give up what is so precious to us to just anybody right and so i know like i said we women can get on this oh my gosh mm-hmm. he's the dream and he's it <laughs> and that it does you yes. know yes and because he talked a good game honey <laughs> <laughs> to get close enough yes. to us so that we could think mm-hmm. that this was the one right and not saying all men are this way but it's happened and it's happening and it's going to continue to right. happen right okay but um just like my sis said, you got to find somebody who you can confide in and when right. you struggle in these areas that when you're struggling in it, that's something that you go, I just shouldn't be doing it then. Right. You know, when we find that because we have had different partners mm-hmm. and then we're like, it's the same thing over and over again. Right. And I'm telling you, this question kind of came up because my daughter, which is 25, and her girlfriend were having this conversation. Mm. And I just happened to be privy in the room. <laughs> and so I was like, wow. And just, but to listen to them at, you know, 25, 26 in that right. age ramp. And they're going, I, maybe I just shouldn't be doing this anymore. Right. And I'm like, no, <laughs> you shouldn't be. be. Right. Because you haven't found the self-worth of yourself to know that you don't have to give up the cookie right. to anybody. Right. You know, and and just knowing that that should not be the end all. That should not be the right. begin all. Mm-hmm. You know, when it comes to a relationship that you're having right. with a with a man, right? You know, um, that there is more about a relationship than the sex. Right. The sex is like the last thing we should be thinking, thinking about. about. Yes. But for what it, for the reason thereof that there is truly sin in us all. That's the first thing yeah. that gets talked about. Yeah felt about yep. we're all in our emotions yep. you know that type of thing so just to encourage you as my sis said whatever decisions you've made mm-hmm. those decisions don't be beating yourself up about them right. but just you know allow yourself to forgive you and to move forward and definitely having somebody who you can connect with who's gonna love you I mean, right where you're at right. that girlfriend who's gonna say girl it's all right we all done did something right that we not proud of or that we said why did we do it but to know that we can go forward from there right and a true girlfriend will push you into your greatness yeah will help you get to that place even when we make a mistake again in the same area right she gonna love you just where you are right you know so i just i just wanted to put that out there yes. and just say there you know you got the 90 day rule but yes honestly you got to take that thing between you and god and if, if there's we didn't want to put religion as that right. basis, but right. you know, there are many who do believe. Right. And even still, we have made decisions that God would not have wanted us just to make. make. Yeah. You know, but he's such a forgiving. He's just like, hey, here I am. Yep. You know, and if you don't have a relationship, you definitely just have someone in your life who's going to encourage you just to move forward, you know, when we make our mistakes. Yes. yes. And just and like you say, you just, you having that relationship with God. Mm-hmm. We're not pushing no religion on you. You know who you serve. But yeah. um, just making sure that you and God have that talk. And not beat yourself up because of the things that you did before you started to have a, a relationship with God. Yeah. Because we do beat ourselves up. Yes, We do. We do because we, we say, oh, we knew that was wrong. But then once you start to have a relationship with God, then you realize the things... And you have to forgive yourself and ask for forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And so, ladies, again, let me go through. There's more questions yes. down here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, what was, okay. Uh, yes, Mira says she's talked to Mia all the time about, about sex. Oh, not Mia. That's our baby. They grow up so fast. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, yes, we have to start. Donna said, yes, you have to start early. Yes, mm-hmm. we have to start to have that conversation. Because our parents didn't have that conversation with us. Yeah. And like Tracy was saying, maybe it was that they did not know. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to, re- one thing I've, I, I realized is that sometimes our parents, they learn from their parents. Yes. So maybe their parents yes. did not have that conversation. Maybe yeah. their parents told them don't have sex, mm-hmm. but didn't say why not to have sex. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, Jacqueline says, better to learn at home. Yes, it is. 
Mary said you can't have sugar coat you can't sugarcoat nothing that's exactly right you got to just be straightforward come out shooting from the hip as we say down south um donna said yes because they need to know that they can have an open dialogue and not be judged yes definitely yeah. uh as women sometimes i know for women sometimes we feel that we don't want to be judged judged because women do judge and we should not do that because listen yeah. uh you're judging another sister but that sister don't know when you close your door what is going on in your house so what you're judging that sister about is probably what's going on in your life too and you just don't want you want that sister to feel bad you want to talk about that sister but see that mm. sister don't know that when you go home and shut your door that's the same thing that's going on in your household mm. but you don't want her to know that because I don't want her to feel good about herself. Mm. And so we should not be tearing each other down. Because listen, I know I posted a couple of, I forgot, it was a couple of months ago, we went to the event downtown. You invited me to go. Mm -hmm. And I said, when a sister, when you have a sister that will have a seat at the table for you, she's had a seat at the table for me. Listen, so when either one of us get to the point where we so desire and God so wants us to be, listen, don't think that neither one of us won't have a, a seat yeah. at that table because listen, you have to be able to be uh, that person that's open and know that if I make it, if she makes it, that she's going to bring me along and I'm going to bring her along because listen, it's enough seats at the table for Come everybody. On. Come on. <laughs> but you got to be open and willing enough to know that when either one of us arrive at the destination, Listen, she's coming and I'm going to come with her. It's enough out here to be made. And that's a lot of times with women. Yeah. They say we are crabs in the bucket. I'm not a crab. Nah. And I'm not in a bucket. No bucket. Because if I can help a sister, <laughs> no matter Why? if you talk about me, no matter if you dog me. Listen, I'm going to help you to a certain point. Mm -hmm. But when it gets to the point that you just going to beat me down, okay, you know what? You're on your own. Because <laughs> yeah. I done helped you. Yeah. And I've done things behind behind the scene. That nobody knows about, but I'm not out here trying to be public about it. See, a lot of times women, uh, I, I, people help them, and when they get to that plateau, well, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You didn't help me, but when you know yourself that you've done everything to help that person get it, listen, it's okay that they forgot about you because listen, God didn't forget about you. Amen. He knows exactly what you did. Yes. He knew exactly how you helped that person get to the next step, mm -hmm. and you don't have to get out there. See what I see with a lot of women and I know we was about to go and I'm, I'm about to got to say this I see a lot of women on social media um, being negative about other women they don't say the women's name but you can tell the way the word way it's worded what they're saying uh, listen just because another sister uh, didn't buy your product yeah. didn't come to your event didn't give you an applaud, didn't say congratulations, it is okay. Mm -hmm. Because maybe they weren't supposed to be on that ride with you. Maybe they weren't supposed to say congratulations. Mm -hmm. Maybe they weren't supposed to buy your products because maybe it, it whatever it may have been, listen, keep moving forward. Don't mm -hmm. allow one person, two person to stunt your growth or stunt you from moving in the purpose that you're supposed to be in. Yes. Because it's going to be times that you're going to be by yourself. Yes. On your journey, doing whatever it is as an entrepreneur and as a woman. Sometimes we do find ourselves by ourselves. Uh, but sometimes find that girlfriend. I'm encouraging you. Find that girlfriend, one or two, whatever it is, yes. that you can pick up the phone, that you can have time together, uh, and that you can have a seat at the table. Because that's what it's all about, having a seat at the table. and being, at her table. Yes. <laughs> and being able to bring your girlfriends along. Yes. Listen, listen, she may say something something that I may not agree with, vice versa. But listen, if it's something that said, be woman enough to say, you know what, that kind of hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. Maybe I did need to hear it, but at that mm -hmm. time, I wasn't ready to receive it. Right. And it's okay that you have that conversation because that lets you know that you are maturing, that you can say, girl, now you, now you just really out of order <laughs> when you was on that Facebook going in on somebody. <laughs> sometimes I want to, sometimes I really want to, if they had it where you could just really talk <laughs> to the person. I have done that. I have, I've, I really have done one young lady and I inboxed her. I called her cause I had a personal number and I was like, listen, 
Girl, I understand you. What you're saying. Just go in and take that post down. Mm. Take it down. She's younger than me. And she did. She texted me back a couple of days later and said, Mr. Wanda, I thank you for telling me that. Just take it down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand you was trying to vent. Listen, I tried to vent too. And I realized as I typed it, girl, don't send that. <laughs> don't send that text. <laughs> like, I've had an issue with a woman and I had to call Tracy. Like, girl, she went in. I'm, I'm, about, to, I'm about to say some things I ain't supposed to say to this girl. Like, really? <laughs> and, and I'm saying, so she had to talk me down because listen I had already typed some other stuff <laughs> and I had to retype it because I knew I wasn't supposed to be saying that and I had and then I called like girl did you let me tell you what she said so she just talked me down because I was really about to go in when I shouldn't be going in because it wasn't worth it she wasn't worth me going in on her but just having that friend and that sister friend that say yeah, you was right to say that, but how about I say it this way? Let's change it around. And so I think of that because I was, I really, I was on the phone like Tracy. I'm about to go in. She done lost her mind. Who she thinks she talking to? But she, talk, you know, we had that conversation. And so you have to have those times when you, like, girl, you on the top of the mountain. I'm about to jump off because I'm about to go real in. And you can't do that. And so you just have to back in, back, back. Rethink what you're going to say. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say sometimes with these young women, listen, encourage them. You don't have to put them out on blast. Inbox them. If you got their private number, call them. Girl, take that down. Don't say that. <laughs> right. Because me and Zanetta be on sometimes. That's my, my Zanetta, me and my friend. We call her Tanker. Me and her be sometimes be like, girl, did you see that? Now, she didn't really have to say that. <laughs> I said, girl, want somebody just act, want somebody to say something to her. And it may not be neither one of our friends, but sometimes you just want to inbox them and say, baby, yeah. don't do that. Yeah. Because you've been about a man. You've been about your baby daddy. You've been about another woman. That, that, that's We cannot keep beating each other down. Be powerful enough because we are powerful as women yes. to go to them and say, listen, you may not know me personally. But what you said or what you posted that was not uh, appropriate, let's let's do it. I encourage you, you know, like try to give us some encouragement. Try to, you know, and sometimes they're not going to be accepted to what you're going to say. Yeah. Because they're in their feelings right at that moment. Mm -hmm. But give them a few days and just say, you know what, take that post down. Rethink what you said (laughs) and try to reword that because, baby, that's just not appropriate. And sometimes I, I probably have stuff that maybe... I should have, but I did at the time. But I try to think before I speak. I try to think before I post some things. Because sometimes people be posting stuff and I be like, <laughs> okay, let me, let, me just, let me say how I feel about this. And then, especially when it's political time. Mm-hmm. people re- You really get to know who people are mm-hmm. when it's election time. Mm-hmm. And so I have to kind of pull back. I call Zanetta and me and her sometimes to be talking and, and just really getting it up. Like, girl, did you see that posted? Now, you really, I really didn't know they felt that way. So they on the right side and they really on the left side. So, you know, you just... You just have to watch what you say and just not beat another sister down because we don't know what's going on with that sister. We don't know what's going on in their home, their personal life. And so sometimes that's just a way of venting. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we have to say, sister, that, that wasn't right. Yeah. And it's okay. And like I said, sometimes they're not going to accept what you say, but it's okay. So we're going to go back in and try to read some more of your comments because we keep saying we're going to get off. So while, <laughs> while, um, while Tracy looking at the comments, I'm going to turn on the oil. So then when we do get on, we're going to be about ready to start our dinner front. All right. Because we, we, we ready to eat. We don't know about y'all. I don't know if y'all ate today, but we ready to eat. Since I want to, you are such a blessing. To, oh, thank you so much, Donna. Thank you so much, Donna. Um, just being able to have this opportunity... Uh, to come on to encourage not only myself but to encourage other women because uh, having I have sisters and I do like I said I do have my girlfriends but just being able to come on and have this platform uh, to show other women listen it's okay if you have a bad day it's okay if you don't know you know, which way you're going, whether you're going right or left, and if it's right or wrong, 
but just coming on to encourage you to uh, make some decisions in your life. Listen, like I said, no is a complete sentence. And it is okay to put yourself first. Because we don't put ourselves first. Listen, I've had to learn that. I'm 53 years old. And I've had to learn that in the last couple of, I'll say, uh, it's been a journey of over a little over 10 years learning how to put me first. Learning how to make decisions mm -hmm. that I want to make for me. Mm -hmm. Not what my family wants. Not what they so desire. Mm -hmm. But being able to learn what I want. What I want to do. Where I want to go. And so, ladies, it's about me being able to have this platform to come on. Uh, soul cooking, like I said, soul cooking is more than just me cooking. Yeah. It's about showing the love. It's about showing the encouragement. It's about inspiring other women just to step out on whatever your destiny, whatever it is you want to do in life. Mm -hmm. Step out on it. Listen, I I had not a clue that I was going to do soul cooking with T. Jacqueline said was talking to me, Jacqueline Turnbull. She was like, T, um, why don't you do a, a, a cooking show? I was like, no, I don't want to do no cooking show. <laughs> and she was like, T, do a cooking show. So the more I thought about it, and I was like, okay, so I started to pray about it. Like, well, what am I going to, you know, it's just going to be me cooking. Uh, and but if some of what some of you may not know is that I wrote a cookbook, uh, Cooking for the Soul. And Cooking for the Soul was really uh, therapeutic mm -hmm. for me. Because mm -hmm. Cooking for the Soul yeah. was a time that I was in a depression. When I did not want family, friends, and my loved ones to know that I was depressed. Because we mm -hmm. had lost our grandmother. We had lost our grandfather. We had lost our uncle. Our grand, my uh, grandmother, our grandmother and our uncle were about six months apart. And um, right after that, that was in 98. And so 2003, we moved to California. And so I was carrying all that grief and did not know that I had not properly grieved. Mm -hmm. And so when I got to California, I had all this sunshine and, you know, it was a different living. It was just a whole different way of, of life uh, coming from a small town where everybody knew everybody. And so I was depressed and I did not want my family to know until one day a son came in. The family came in. They was like, why are the blinds closed? And why have you been in the house all day? And I did not want them to know mm -hmm. that I was depressed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I'm just in here. I'll, I'll, I just want to just lay across the sofa. But I was depressed and I did not want no one to know. And so uh, I wrote Cooking for the Soul because I was saying, God, I don't want to be depressed anymore. What shall I do? Because I don't want to go to the doctor because of the stigma that goes around in the black community. Let's be honest. Come on. Uh, that people say, oh, you crazy. You going to see a therapist, girl? You know, so that stigma was in my head. And so we have to move past some of these stigmas that we have. Uh, not only in the black community, but in every community. And so I started to pray, God, God I don't want to go to the doctor. I want to be able to, what can I do? And so, after a while, God said, why not cook, make a, uh, write a cookbook? So, wow. I'm saying a cookbook. So, what, what am I going to do? So, he said, why not share stories mm -hmm. about your life where food was around? And so, from that, wow. when Jacqueline started to talk about, why don't you do a cooking show? Uh -huh. The first thing I thought about was, oh, he goes back to cooking for, for cooking for the soul. Because cooking in our house and at our table... Whether it was at the kitchen table, whether it was at the dining room table, whether it was on the living room floor or the bedroom, sitting on the bed or the sofa, that was where we were as a family. Mm -hmm. Where we talked about everything, where we shared our innermost, uh, things we didn't yeah. like, things we did like. And so, uh, soul cooking um, for tea is about coming in, just de stressing, forgetting about all your worries, all your cares, and just eating, having a good time, not overeating. But enjoying your food. <laughs> have to be, you know. Yum, yum. Yes. And just enjoying yourself. Yes. And just uh, having and trying different foods. And that's what I try to do. I try to do, uh, try to do different foods. And just bringing families back to the table. Because that's what it's about. Bringing our families back to the table. Yes. So that we can reconnect uh, again. So I thank each one of you uh, for... Just pouring into me, whether it's inbox messages, whether you uh, post it on Facebook, you know, I thank you so much. Uh, so each one of you in in some way, form or fashion inspires me and I thank God that I am an inspiration to you. So I thank you 
for that, Donna. Uh, Donna said, I have really I have really enjoyed the show tonight, ladies. So thank you, Donna. Yay, um, Donna. Yes, yeah, so make sure you check out Donna for paparazzi. Make sure you check out ja uh, Jacqueline Turnbow. She does... Um, she has a coaching program. She also has uh, Friday, Happy Fit Friday. Um, that's my baby. <laughs> of course, you know, when my baby is on, John, that's my baby. I love my son to death. And he'll tell you, we've had that conversation about sex because I had to have it early. Uh, and so I'm glad that he joined me tonight. Thank you, son. Uh, Zanetta says, I have never given... Uh, body parts, playful names. I have always kept it real. There's nothing like having a <laughs> Weta Carlton. So for those that don't know, Weta Carlton is my grandmother and she was a straight shooter. Uh -huh. Straight from the hip. She was a deacon's wife. But listen, she would give it to you straight. She did not care. It was the words that she would choose to say and tell you. But one thing about her, she was always telling you the truth. Whether mm -hmm. we as friends, uh, I can remember uh, uh, one time one of our friends pulled out a pack. The pack of cigarettes fell mm -hmm. out their pockets. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. See? <laughs> making sure I know. Um, the pack of cigarettes fell on the table. Mm -hmm. Nobody said, whose cigarettes? My grandmother was like, who whose cigarettes is these? Because she smoked seven. So we all playing cards. Nobody <laughs> wanted to claim the cigarettes. So she said, okay. So she got them and, and poured water on them. They were a pack of Newports. A fresh pack. And so my friend Jimmy, he said, uh, Miss Weeder, that was mine. She said, we were in high school. She yeah. was like, so you smoking? So I'm going to call your mama and tell you, oh, my God. <laughs> so, of course, she did. She told his mother mm -hmm. uh, that he was smoking. So, like Zanetta said, like she would just tell you straight up. She wasn't going to sugarcoat it. Yeah. She was going to tell you straight up what it was as we were going on, you know, growing. Uh, <laughs> but we did not have that talk why I should not have sex. But... As I got older, the, the conversation changed. Mm -hmm. And so she was a straight shooter. She would tell you straight up. Uh, she would tell some of the boys, y'all need to go wash it. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you thank you all that. Like, she would just straight out the mouth. Uh -huh. And sometimes I would be so embarrassed. Like, Mom, why did you say that? Mm -hmm. Mom. <laughs> but she was just that. That was that person. So Donna says, sometimes we have to be talked down. I know I have to stand down a lot. A lot of times, my nerves can't take it. Yes, I'm the same way. But you know what? Just go in prayer, honey, and start praying. But, but don't allow anyone, no matter who it is, to talk down to you. That's right. Uh, I cannot... I'm and When I see somebody talking down... Let me turn this uh, stove down some. When, some, when I hear uh, someone talking down to someone, whether it's a stranger or someone that I meet or someone just in the store, I'm immediately drawn to that person hmm. like I like I can't do that I cannot allow you like mm -hmm. I'm asking you are you okay and my son has always reminded me because it was a little boy in the Walmart and he was having a tantrum mm -hmm. and my son was saying mom don't go over there <laughs> mom please don't do that <laughs> mom please don't say anything but I was saying to that mother like if you don't want to discipline your child in public take him in the bathroom mm -hmm. because you cannot allow your child just to be in the middle of the store having a, a meltdown. Like, we understand they're going to have meltdowns, but this child was throwing stuff. Like, Ooh. absolutely not. Ooh. Take them in the bathroom and have a talk <laughs> with them. But, you know, so never allow anyone to talk down to you. I don't, I don't, I don't, no one. I'm the boss. The, no, don't, Nobody. don't do it. No, I just cannot do it. Because it just, that just something about me. Um, that just ooh, irks my nerves. So, oh, my cousin is on here. My cousin, my friend. Listen, that's my sister friend too. She said, uh, Chazetta Townsend Jones. She said, what a beautiful We the Carlton moment. Thank you so much. Y'all gonna have me crying because y'all know how, how, how soft hearted I am because my grandmother raised, helped raise all of us. This is my dear cousin. And she... <laughs> She would get out. Lord knows I wish I had some of the recordings <laughs> of how she would like. W one, I can remember once uh, uh, one of the deacons came in uh, to the house and he was talking smack. And we were all in the room together and she's like, boy, didn't I tell you to shut up? I'm watching Jeopardy. <laughs> so he was just a talking. Yep, yep, yep. And we were all in the room. Next thing we know, because next to her bed mm -hmm. was where she kept her gun. She never shot it. She never pulled the trigger. Oh my goodness. So we saw her start to open the draw, and I think it was Zanetta, maybe Chazetta. 
and a couple of Jimmy and we were all sitting in the room but he didn't know what she was about to do uh-huh. and she wasn't going to do nothing but open the draw so when she went to reach the open we all scattered <laughs> he was still sitting there talking and she was like boy didn't I tell you to hush and watch the Jeopardy and we was in the other room <laughs> saying if you don't come out the room she's about to go in the draw and he was like well what's she going to do so he walked around and saw that she had he went running out the room I was like didn't you see us leave Cause we already knew she wasn't gonna do that. She wasn't gonna pull it out. She wasn't gonna shoot it. It was just because when my grandfather died, it was just me and her. So she wanted to make sure we were protected. But she never shot it. She never. She was laying on the she dresser. Was like, I need you to know how serious yes. this is. She was meant jeopardy and uh, will of fortune. Be quiet. I'm watching my TV show. Oh my god. So yes. So you have to know uh, about her uh, because we had such amazing time. So again. I thank you all for coming on with Tracy and I. I yes. thank you, Tracy, for being my guest, my sister, my thank friend. Uh, we're about to cook. We're about to eat because it's getting late. It's, it, it's, it's, I need some yum yums. Yes. Oh, 8.30. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we got to eat. And I know it's late on the East Coast. I thank you all for joining us live here in Soul Cooking with Tea. Uh, this is, like I said, the first of 2019. I'm looking forward to more de-stressed days. Uh, we're going to have some more time, some more girl time. We're going to have some men come in and talk about some men issues and things. And mm-hmm. so, um, if you have any ideas for Soul Cooking with Tea, hey, drop me an inbox message. I'm always open uh, for new subjects, new topics that we can talk about while I'm cooking. And so, again, I'm Tawana Carlton, your host of Soul Cooking with Tea. I'll see y'all. Bye. Bye for now. <laughs>